chase and the taste is so sweet Everyone and welcome to another advanced warfare video. The gameplay I have for you today is an excellent gameplay in which I get 64 kills and I'm sorry, 63 kills and only 14 deaths with 14 flags captured. And yet still the game continues to be very exciting as the difference between the winning team and the losing team is only one point at the end of the game. So I hope you enjoy that. Today's video is going to be about gaming accessories. Things like controllers and TVs and headsets and gaming glasses and you name it. Are they worth your money? Will they make you a better player? Or are they completely gimmicky? And I just want to give a quick disclaimer. I have not used all of the products that I'm going to be talking about in this. However, I have looked up lots of reviews and statistics and numbers online to try and just bring you guys all the relevant information that you would need if you were researching these products to buy yourself. I'm not going to be going in real de real deep with it. My idea here is to give you an idea of what is worth your time to research and what products you can go ahead and skip. I also want to go ahead and say that there, there is no product on the market that is going to take you from being a bad player to a good player. There's a certain level of skill that you have to reach before these products will really make a difference in your game. So if you're just starting out and you're looking to get a competitive edge over your opponents, my suggestion to you is just keep playing, keep practicing, keep getting better, because the products we're talking about will not help you at the beginner level. If you think about it like the NFL or the National Football League, if you're not American and don't know much about American sports, um, if you were to go down to your local community center and sign up for flag football, the level of skill is not going to be at such a high level that having a, a nice pair of gloves or having the right cleats or anything else is really going to make that big of a difference. But then you look at the NFL, and there's a wide receiver in the NFL named Deshaun Jackson, and he is considered to be one of, if not the fastest wide receivers in the entire league. And he ran a 4.35 second 40 yard dash at his combine. There's another wide receiver named Riley Cooper. I am an Eagles fan, so I'm picking on Eagles or former Eagle receivers, if you didn't notice. Uh, Riley Cooper is considered to be one of the slower receivers in the league. He's got what you would call serviceable speed, where he's not too slow to play, but he's not fast enough to scare you. And he ran a 4.53 second 40 yard dash. So the difference between elite speed and barely good enough speed is 0.18 seconds in a 40-yard dash. Now when you get to that level of skill, you get to that level of talent, what you're really talking about is you know, having a, the right pair of gloves, having the right helmet, having the right pair of shoes or cleats really is enough to make the difference between you being a fringe, decent, good enough player and earning yourself a seven-year, you know, $50 million contract. And it's the same thing with gaming. If you get to the point where, where you're doing really well and you are just looking for a way to get a little bit better, to take yourself from being a good player up to being a great player, then a lot of these accessories will help you out and are worth the money. If you're looking, again, just to get a leg up on the competition as a noob, the, the answer is practice and just get better at the game. So there are four things that make a good Call of Duty player into a great Call of Duty player, and those things are strategy, both with your class selection and your map awareness, accuracy, response time or reaction time, and awareness to what's going on around you. And for all of these things, except for strategy, there are products on the market that claim to help you with each of these things. For accuracy, you have control freaks. And if you don't know what control freaks are, they are little plastic extenders that you clip onto the tip of the uh, 
control stick on your controller, making it longer. And what a longer control stick does is it gives you more range of motion, allowing for more minute changes. These will really help you when you're trying to go for long shots or if you're trying to snipe and you have to make very minute, small things. It, the uh, What it basically does is it gives you the effect of lower... Uh, what's it called? Lower uh, sensitivity where you can move your thumb farther but move the screen less and the problem with just lowering your sensitivity is it means that you can't turn around as fast and so if someone's shooting you from behind you have no chance of spinning around and getting them with control freaks you can keep that same high sensitivity allowing you to spin around faster but at the same time have low sensitivity accuracy and if you haven't figured out already i can tell you from experience that control freaks are awesome they are the cheapest of all the things we're going to talk about and they're probably the most effective and i suggest you pick them up as soon as you can i know best buy carries them i've seen them there or you could just get them online that's a great product and it will make you a better gamer uh it takes about five or six matches maybe to get used to them and after you get to that point you won't want to play without them again now for awareness we're going to talk about gaming glasses and I'll admit right now, right off the bat, I do not own a pair of gaming glasses, nor do I plan on buying a pair of gaming glasses. And uh, so this is not going to be a from personal experience review here. This is going to be me basically condensing all the information I've gathered about gaming glasses and putting them all right here for your consumption. I've heard several different things about gaming glasses. I've heard that they claim to... Uh, enhance the clarity of your screen, cut back on glare on the screen so that you can make out what's going on, on your screen just a little bit faster. Not necessarily helping with your input lag, but rather helping with your mind lag, I guess is what we would call it. And I, I got on the website, I went to both Gunner website and NoScope websites, which are the two main uh, sellers or manufacturers of gaming glasses and I'll tell you uh, to their credit I have not seen anywhere on their website where it claims to actually make you better at gaming what what they have on their website is it reduces eye fatigue and it makes it to where you can play your games longer at in a single sitting and that I can believe but it seems like uh, for you to really get any benefit from them, you would need to play for six plus hours a day and get to the point where your eyes just can't handle the screen anymore. And I don't know how many people actually play that much that are getting online looking up YouTube videos on how to get better at Call of Duty. So I would guess that if you're watching this video, you are not part of the audience that would benefit from gaming glasses. I'll also tell you that all the reviews I've seen that that make the claim that gaming glasses are supposed to enhance your clarity and make your response time a little bit faster, uh, those reviewers also said that it doesn't work. They, they said the only effect that they saw from the glasses was less eye fatigue, and to the credit of the manufacturers, that seems to be all that they're advertising on their websites. So, in short, I would suggest not going with gaming glasses, because it seems like quite a waste of money, especially considering how much they cost. They seem to be anywhere from $20 up to over $100. And finally, there's uh, decreasing your reaction time, making it so that you are reacting to what's on screen faster. And for that, you have two options. You can go with a scuff style controller that puts buttons on the back of the controller so that you can respond faster without actually moving your thumb off of the aiming stick. I can tell you that those are nice. Um, they're not something that you'll need. I'm not saying that, that that'll be the difference between you being a bad player and a good player, of course. But if you're at the point where you feel like your controller is holding you back, I can tell you the uh, scuff or a scuff-like controller will help with that. You will uh, you will get better. It does increase 
the amount of things you can do with your controller and it does decrease the amount of time it takes to do those things. I have a scuff style controller. It's not an actual scuff because when I bought it, PS4 didn't have a scuff available. And when I am ready to replace it, it will be with a name brand scuff. But I have one and I I just I don't play without it. You know, I have the two actual Sony controllers and I don't use either one of them because I like that controller way too much to get rid of it. I if my controller is dying, I take that as a sign to either plug it in or uh, turn it off for a while and let it charge because I don't want to play without having the buttons on back controller. It makes that much of a difference. And the final thing that we're going to talk about are gaming monitors instead of televisions for consoles. And I can tell you, I just recently bought a gaming monitor and my KDR has skyrocketed a lot. I'll, I'll just be honest with you, my numbers aren't very impressive, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. Um, when I played my last game on my big screen TV, which was about a week ago, I had over 17,000 kills and 17,000 deaths, and my KDR was just barely below 1. I had about 30 more deaths than kills, and that's the kind of player I was during the entire time that... Advanced Warfare has been out. Now, after playing on my gaming monitor, my KDR is 1.05, and I have nearly 1,000 more kills than deaths. And that all happened just in this last week. It's been a huge turnaround for me, and the reason is because gaming monitors work. They absolutely work. we got to talk about input lag. You get lag... Lag in its basic, most basic form is the length of time it takes to transfer data from one place to another. Input lag is the length of time it takes for your system to send information to your television and have your television put it on screen. And most televisions are not built for gaming. There are some televisions that are built for gaming. There's televisions that have gaming modes in them that make them more responsive. But most televisions are not. I've looked online. Some of the numbers I've found are basically the average, uh, the average input lag time for a standard big screen LCD TV is somewhere between 50 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds, which means that the length of time from when you push the button on your controller to it happening on screen or, or for your system sending the message to your screen and then having it show up on your screen is 50 to 100 milliseconds and to put that in perspective in Call of Duty that is a one bullet difference if somebody shows up in your screen and fires a bullet and then fires another bullet they're not going to actually show up on your screen until after that second bullet's been fired you're basically giving a one bullet advantage to everybody you face in a head-to-head -head gunfight if you're playing with that level of lag from your screen. Now the uh, the gaming monitors, on the other hand, their typical lag is below 20 milliseconds, and uh, for a decent, a really good gaming monitor, it's below 10 milliseconds, and it has made a huge, huge difference. Also, gaming monitors have a faster response time, which is the length of time it takes for your pixel to go from gray to white and back to gray again. And the reason that that is important is because when you're turning really fast in Call of Duty, you're trying to aim at something that's moving very quickly, your TV sometimes cannot keep up, and it, it causes a blurry effect on your screen, and that's not going to happen nearly as badly or as often on a gaming monitor, and that makes a big deal when you're trying to aim at somebody or you're trying to spin around and turn on somebody. That... It's just uh, it's a night and day difference for me. I don't ever really want to play on a TV again. That was after finding out the kind of disadvantage it puts you at. It is a huge, huge difference. So I do suggest getting that. So just to wrap things up or do kind of a too long, didn't watch, whatever. Um, control freaks, given the price tag. And the effectiveness of them, I strong, I definitely suggest them to everybody because it will improve anybody's game. It's not going to make you a great player right away, but they're worth having anyway. You'll be better than you would be without them, and they're pretty cheap, so pick those up. They're a good idea. 
gaming glasses unless you're the type of person that's going to be staring at your screen for six plus hours a day and don't want to be held back by your eyes becoming fatigued are probably not worth your money and frankly i'm not sure how much of a difference they really make compared to regular sunglasses or regular sunglasses of similar price i should say and a uh, scuff style controller uh, they are worth it if you're at the point where your controller is holding you back. If if you get so good that your controller is holding you back, there is a there is a next step up that is scuff, and it is worth it if that's where you're at, and you have the income and a gaming monitor over a TV. If you're looking for a new screen to play on, or if you have the disposable income required to purchase a gaming monitor. They are well worth the purchase. Great product. Very, very uh, strongly just to suggest those. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and commentary. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that this gave you some ideas of what to look for in the future and ways to uh, improve yourself as a gamer. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And... Until my next video, have a nice day.